I'm gonna get it. San Diego Torero basketball. When that hits 205, he's gonna put the locator in. All right, you want me to, I'll start at the locator. And then once I say good afternoon, I'll look at the camera. If that makes, that's good. Stones throw away from the Pacific Ocean on the beautiful campus of the University of San Diego at the Jenny Craig Pavilion. We got women's college basketball on the West Coast Conference Network. The Gonzaga Bulldogs coming down to take on the San Diego Toreros. Should be a fun one this afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome, everybody. I'm Braden Soprano. Thanks again for tuning in to the West Coast Conference Network. We got a great game in store for you as the Gonzaga Bulldogs come in at 15 and four on the season and have now won their six consecutive West Coast Their last time at, at the uh, USD Toreros, they are 10 and nine on five and five at home, two and five in West Coast Conference playing with that. Let's take a look real quick at the West Coast Conference standings. As you see, Brigham Young leads the field in women's college basketball here in the West Coast Conference, 7-0, followed by the Gonzaga Bulldogs at 6-0, and then the San, Di San Diego Toreros in the seventh spot after losing their fifth straight game, coming off of a loss against Portland just a couple days ago at 2-5 in West Coast Conference play. Both these teams have done an exceptionally good job at shooting the three ball, and that's kind of our main focus tonight as we dive into a couple players that start with Gonzaga. We're going to look at Sierra Walker tonight. She is the leader in the clubhouse when it comes to three points made this season and three-point percentage. Last year, she led the Gonzaga Bulldogs with a 40% uh, rate from three-point line. She's continuing that right now, shooting 41% from beyond the arc. As for San Diego, Steph Gorman is a player to watch this afternoon. She also leads from the three-point line for the Toreros, and the Toreros are going to have to rely on her to make some big plays today if they want to be able to compete with the Gonzaga Bulldogs. A couple other players that, to mention as we talk about before we uh, get ready for action. Kira Okri is back for the San Diego Toreros. Why is that significant? Well, the last time not only did she play, but was against this Gonzaga Bulldog team, she dropped 24 points against the Zags, scoring 15 in the fourth quarter. In that game, San Diego shot from three-point line at 100% rate in the first quarter as well as the free throw line. We got great college basketball action coming your way. I'm Braden Suprenit. Thanks again for tuning in to the West Coast Conference Network. When we come back, we got Gonzaga and San Diego on the West Coast Conference Network. All right, that was good tip of the audio cutout.
Welcome back into the Jenny Craig Pavilion. I'm Braden Soprenna. Thanks again for tuning in to the West Coast Conference Network. We got a nice women's college basketball game this afternoon as the Gonzaga Bulldogs travel down to San Diego to take on the San Diego Toreros. Bulldogs, like I mentioned in the open, 15 and four on the season, six and zero in West Coast Conference play. They have dominated this conference at least in the last five seasons, if not uh, a little bit more than that. In the last five seasons, Gonzaga 72 and five against West Coast Conference teams. Their only five losses have come to St. Mary's and BYU. San Diego has not beaten Gonzaga in their last 10 opportunities as Gonzaga has a 49 and 23 record all time against the Toreros in women's college basketball. Get ready to uh, set the tip. And we're underway here at the Jenny Craig Pavilion. Starting five for the Bulldogs today, Anwavir uh, Joge. Abby O'Connor, Kaylee Trong, Sierra Walker, and Melody Kempton. As for the Toreros, Steph Gorman, Erica Martinson, Jordan Edwards, Kendall Bird, and Sydney Hunter. First possession for the Bulldogs is under some pressure as Melody Kempton takes it now with the left-handed dribble, kicks it out for a three-point attempt, and it's off the back end of the rim. Rebound by Jordan Edwards. And San Diego makes a stop on the first possession defensively in this afternoon's game. Edwards with the right-handed dribble, kick out to Sydney Hunter, deep two off the front end of the rim, and a rebound by Gonzaga. Gonzaga has done pretty well with the rebound so far this year. They are one of the taller teams in the West Coast Conference, at least with the starters this afternoon. 6'1 for Melody Kempton. Anwa Virjoge is 6'5. Six 6'0 foot six foot for Abby Connor, and then Sierra Walker's 5'8 with Kaylee Trong being 5'9. That one doesn't come to pass, but you can already tell the difference as Virjoge with six foot five height in the paint. It's gonna be a problem for the undersized Toreros, although Kendall Bird is sitting at six foot two. So Gonzaga gets the rebound with 15 to shoot now on the shot clock. Worked it into Virjoge. 10 to shoot. Sees Trong for a deep two. And that doesn't draw a rim. Five seconds to shoot. Trong again, another three this time, and it's good. And that will start the scoring this afternoon. Gonzaga up 3-0. We mentioned it again in the open. The three-point basket has been the big moneymaker for Gonzaga. 
They're first in the West Coast Conference, shooting 36.1% from three-point line. San Diego second in the conference, shooting 34.8. We'll see a handful of three points attempts at least tonight. Jordan Edwards with a three. That's off the back end of the backboard and a rebound by Kendall Bird as he gets knocked away by Verjoge. San Diego, the last time that they played Gonzaga, or at least the last time these two teams met up, was back on January 15th up in Spokane. We got an offensive foul called. Well, foul will go against Anwa Verjoge. But up in Spokane, Gonzaga won the, the game 76-66. San Diego came out hot, though. They did not miss from three or the free throw line in the first quarter. Tonight, again, a little bit different. San Diego, of course, is trying to stop a five-game losing streak here in conference play. As they've had a pretty tough schedule having to play Gonzaga. They played BYU twice. They played St. Mary's, and then Portland was their last matchup. They lost to Portland two days ago, 68-55 here at home. Five to shoot. Edwards, right-handed layup, too hard off the glass. And kind of the same characteristic story here for San Diego with the struggle from shooting, already 0 for 3 tonight, and a nice lay-in there by Trong will give the Bulldogs a 5-0 lead. Steph Gorman for 3, and it rolls in. Get the scoring started for San Diego. We mentioned in the open that Steph Gorman was going to be a player to watch. The 6-foot senior out of Australia, the transfer from Utah State, leads the team in 3-point percentage this year. And San Diego could use her to get a little hot to try to stay in the game. And that three-point basket is good. So they got to rule a two-point officially for Steph Gorman. Foot was on the line, but a three-point basket there for Walker. It was the other player we mentioned in the open. So it's 8-2 in favor of Gonzaga with 6.23 left in there in the fourth, first quarter. Kendall Bird pumps once, then kicks it out to Sidney Hunter, who reverses and drives down to the right side and gets stuffed by Anwar Verjoge. Kira Okri now coming into the game. 5'10", redshirt junior out of San Diego, California. Attended the prestigious La Jolla Country Day for high school. It's one of the best women's or girls basketball programs, not only in the city of San Diego, but the state of California. Produced a number of talent. Kelsey Plum, one of the more recent players to come out of La Jolla Country Day, of course, Set the scoring record for the NCAA a couple years ago. Got drafted and is playing in the WNBA. And, of course, the uh, signature on that was when she was brought into the San Antonio Spurs game and was uh, throwing T-shirts in the stand. She was almost going to, like, the third deck. But a product of La Jolla Country Day where Kira Oakry played her high school basketball. And it's good to have her back in the lineup if you're a Torero fan. After the foul, Yvonne Ejim shooting at the line, makes the first. 64% free throw shooter on the year, 68% in conference play, now two for two on the night. She is from Calgary, Alberta, with the Edge School. 2021 all West Coast Conference tournament team and all freshman team just a year ago. And Yvonne Ejim has seven siblings. She's one of seven in her family. 10-2 lead for Gonzaga, 5.38 left in the first quarter. 10 to shoot for the Toreros as Gorman tries to work it past a couple defenders. Hunter now four to shoot, down to three, to two, to one, and a travel by Steph Gorman will be a turnover for San Diego. Their first turnover of the afternoon. San Diego in their last game with Pepperdine combined for over 50 turnovers and what was a little bit of a sloppy game, not only for San Diego, but also Portland. Gonzaga currently on a 5-0 run with 5.20 to go in the first. And a whistle out of bounds. As Gonzaga will now inbound it, gets it over to Melody Kempton, who passes out to Trong. This is Kaylin Trong the twin sister of Kaylee Trong, who started this afternoon's game. And a pass inside 
to Abby O'Connor. Unable to handle it is O'Connor. Ball gets thrown away and out of bounds in San Diego. Will make a stop defensively. A little bit of pressure now from Gonzaga. They try to run a 1-3-1 defense over the, over the top, over to Jordan Edwards as she dis it into Horsemeyer, who's now into the game for the first time. Now back out to Edwards with 17 on the shot clock. Trying to get a screen from Horsemeyer. Works to the right side, now cuts back to the left. Reverses pivot, can't find anywhere to go. Trying to find somewhere to get it to. Gets it to Horsemeyer underneath the basket. Now back out to Kendall Bird, three to shoot. Jordan Edwards for three and just off the rim, but a rebound by Kendall Bird and the guys put back to break the 5-0 run for Gonzaga. Now 10-4 in favor of the Bulldogs. Kalen Trong now over to O'Connor, kicks it out to Ejin, who works it back to Trong of the far right side. Covered by Oakry, now Sydney Hunter picks her up as it gets over to Kempton. Kempton now into the inside corner for a three-point basket, it's good. Sierra Walker hits it again. Proven why she is the team leader in three-point percentage on the team that shoots the most three-pointers in the West Coast Conference. 13-4 now in favor of the Bulldogs. Oakry now working it back. Goes to the right side, kicks out to Horsemeyer. Horsemeyer works with the left hand. Now gets it to Bird. Bird trying to go up strong and gets stuffed by Kempton. And it'll be another change of possession in favor of Gonzaga. O'Connor over to Walker and off the front of the rim. Walker gets her own rebound on a good hustle play after a fresh shot clock. O'Connor now, right-handed layup, can't get it to go. Rebounded by Kendall Bird. Up to Sydney Hunter with a little bit of tempo. There's Oakry in the far side corner. She holds onto the ball, now gets a cutting Edwards who gets it to Horsemeyer. Horsemeyer back out to Bird. Sydney Hunter is uncovered, trying to get Edwards to cut. Now Edwards will get the ball and dribble it outside the arc with 10 to shoot. Working it back with the left side, out to Sydney Hunter, who now moves it inside at the West Coast Conference logo, picks up her dribble, takes a shot, draws rim. Kendall Bird with a hustle play, but can't hang on, and the ball gets knocked out of bounds off of the Toreros. And we're going to take a quick timeout. Gonzaga leads San Diego 13-4, and you're watching Women's College Basketball on the West Coast Conference Network. Coming out of the timeout, Gonzaga leads at 13 to four with 2.45 remaining here in the first quarter. As Trong works it inside, trying to get it to Ejim. Ejim puts it up strong, can't get it to go, gets her own rebound, but then Kalfani will be charged with over the back on the foul. It would be Kalfani's first foul of the evening. Be the first personal second team foul for San Diego. And Ejin will shoot two. Or correction, underneath the basket. 
Try to work it inside to Ejin again. And now an offensive foul called against Gonzaga. So two fouls each. San Diego trailing 13 to 4. Leona Kalfani gets it into Steph Gorman. Gets a pick from Erikstrup. Works to try to get inside to Kalfani, who dribbles it back out. Just outside the free throw line, kicks it back over to Gorman at the top of the key. Gets a screen by Hunter, now works it back. Kalfani, uncontested, deep two off the back end of the rim, and a rebound there by Trong. This is Kaylee Trong bringing it up, Kiss, passes it to her twin sister, Kaylin Trong, who works it back to Ejin at the top, getting covered by Sydney Hunter two minutes to go here in the first. Kayla Williams with the ball that just checked into the game after the timeout, six foot one sophomore. Three sport athlete in high school, played basketball, volleyball, and ran track. Was the ninth best wing in her class, according to ESPN, when she graduated from Windward High School in Los Angeles area. So Trong to Trong gets it inside. Trying to get a screen from Verjoge as they get it down to Ejin. Ejin with the left handed dribble drives the lane, count the bucket. Three point play coming your way. Ejin will try to make it a three-point play here. I mentioned had seven siblings growing up in Calgary, Alberta. She was also named the Miss Basketball Alberta her junior season in high school. 2021 All-West Coast Conference Tournament team last season. 2021 West Coast Conference All-Freshman team. Also played for the Canadian National Team for a while. And sinks the free throw for a three-point play to give the Bulldogs a 16-4 lead over San Diego. Horsemeyer stuffed by Ejin. Here comes Williams over to Trong and Horsemeyer comes back on a nice hustle play defensively. And after getting rejected on the offensive side to come back and prevent Gonzaga from getting an easy two, live to fight another day. So 16-4 in favor of the Bulldogs as Martinson comes back into the game for Horsemeyer. Kaylin Trong with a left-handed dribble, work it against Kylie, or uh, correction, Casey Newbert, draws the foul. It'll be Newbert's first personal foul. Fifth team foul. And we will see Kaylin Trong at the free throw line. 91% free throw shooter for Kaylin Trong on the year. And she misses the first. Free throw percentage is something else that Gonzaga dominates. They lead the West Coast Conference. They shoot 78% as a team from the charity strike. Something that definitely wins you basketball games at all levels, especially at the collegiate level. 17-4 in favor of the Zags. Newbert driving baseline, left hand, puts it up. Can't get it to go, tried to get her own rebound, but Verjoge was there. And she worked over to Trong. Kofani got a little bit too aggressive on that one. Will be charged with the foul. And Kaylin Trong will now shoot again. Kaylin Trong, twin sisters with Kaylee Trong, both here at Gonzaga. Both wanted to go to Gonzaga to expand their faith as well as fit into the family-like atmosphere that Gonzaga has. And when you talk to Gonzaga players, that's a lot of the reason why they came to Gonzaga it was because of the family atmosphere that the basketball program has, the success that Gonzaga women's basketball has had. The men's team gets a lot of national attention because they are ranked consistently in the top 25, but the women's basketball team has also done fairly well on their own, especially under their head coach in Lisa Fortier. And we'll talk more about her later on in the broadcast. 19-4 lead in favor of Gonzaga. As San Diego now has possession of it. Jordan Edwards, the inbound after the break in the action. Kicks it over to Newbert at the top of the key. Now a handoff to Edwards. Edwards back in control of the possession with just under a minute to go here in the first quarter. 15 seconds to shoot on the shot clock. Left-handed dribble, the crossover. Tries to sneak it out and does draw the foul. It'll be the third team foul for Gonzaga this quarter. Kaylin Trong with the foul, first personal foul. 
And we'll see Sierra Walker now come back into the game for Gonzaga. For Kalen Tron. Inbound to Newbert. Over to Edwards in the near side corner. Now works it back out to the near side wing. As San Diego goes from left to right on your screen. Edwards over to the right side. Newbert kicks it down into Mark, uh, Eric Strupp, and that gets stolen. 35 seconds left in the quarter, 25 on the shot clock as Kaylee Trong brings it across court, covered by Jordan Edwards. Edwards has been known to pick a pocket or two. She's done it a lot this season for a team that leads the West Coast Conference in steals. For Joe Gay, works it down inside to Kempton, who can't handle it, and it rolls out of play. So 17.4 seconds left in the quarter. There will be no shot clock for San Diego in the final possession here in the first quarter. At least San Diego would like to keep it that way. Martinson will bring it up the court. She kicks it over to Edwards. Gonzaga bringing some pressure. Gorman with an uncontested three, and it's good. That breaks the 9-0 scoring run for Gonzaga, and it's now 19-7. Two to shoot on the clock. One, and it's an air ball by Trong, but San Diego with a little bit of spark at the end of the first quarter. 19-7 in favor of the Bulldogs. I'm Braden Suprenant. You're watching the West Coast Conference Network. Getting ready to start the second quarter of play here at the Jenny Craig Pavilion. I'm Braden Zipprenet. Thanks again for tuning in to the West Coast Conference Network. Gonzaga off to a hot start. They lead it 19 to 7, but San Diego finished the first quarter with a nice three-point basket by Steph Gorman to make it 19 to 7 as San Diego tries to battle back in the game. San Diego with the possession to start the second quarter. Kendall Bird. At the uh, free throw, or at the uh, three-point line, now kicks it over to Gorman. Gorman back to Newbert. Newbert takes one pivot and then, unfortunately, takes too many steps. So a travel called against San Diego. Their third turnover of the afternoon. First quarter stats as a team. Gonzaga shot 35% for the field, 21% for San Diego. Three-point line, which is going to be a key for today's game. Three for nine for the Bulldogs at 33%. San Diego answers in percentage, shooting one for three. And the Bulldogs have taken advantage of the free throw line, six for seven. Six on the shot clock now for Verjoge. Out to Walker for three, and it's good. The Bulldogs really kill it for the three-point line, especially Sierra Walker. And she's putting on a performance already tonight. Three for five from the field slash the three-point line and already has nine on the afternoon. 
22-7 lead for the Bulldogs. Steph Gorman for a jump shot too. Can't get it to go and it goes out of bounds. Teams that are able to take advantage of the free throw line seem to have a lot of success at any level of basketball and that's exactly what Gonzaga has done in the 2021-2022 season. 85% for the free throw line tonight. And on the year coming into the game, we're shooting 78%. The one miss was by Kaylin Trong, who actually shoots 91% from the free throw line. As Kaylee Trong gets the put back for the Bulldogs, now up 24 to seven. Edwards out to Oakry, who's back in. Oakry picks up her dribble, tries to pivot out of it, and then there's a double dribble. And that's going to be a timeout called by head coach Sidney Fisher. We'll take a quick break. San Diego trails uh, Gonzaga 24-7 right here on the West Coast Conference Network. After the timeout by San Diego, Gonzaga inbounding under the backboard and a nice steal there by Jordan Edwards. Nice little slide and unfortunately throws it away. Uh, Gonzaga leads it 24 to seven as Edwards gets the possession yet again. Sydney Fisher in her 22nd season as a head coach, 17th season at the University of San Diego. Did not like we sh what she saw in a couple of possessions for San Diego, so call the timeout. Kaylee Trong now working against Bird. Now backed over to Kempton. Kempton out to Walker, who's been on fire tonight from the three-point line. Walker now drives baseline on the left side, runs out of room, kicks it out to Trong for three. That doesn't go. Rebound. Kempton out to Walker. Walker to O'Connor. O'Connor gets it out to Trong, which almost got back to the line. And there's 13 to shoot on the shot clock. Trong trying to work in isolation on the right side. Now kicks it back inside. There's a wide open Kempton for two. 26-7 now in favor of Gonzaga. Oakry now over to Gorman. Gorman with the right-handed dribble. Kicks it out to Edwards on the left side. Edwards pumps once, then tries to dribble past Walker, loses her handle a couple times. Three to shoot, deep jump shot, can't get it to go. And it's gonna be a shot clock violation on San Diego, but I think the ball went out on San Diego anyway. We'll see what the call is. They're gonna put one second on the shot clock, I think. So one second on the shot clock, and it will be Torero basketball. So it's going to have to, they're going to have to try to get a shot off quickly. 
Gets the ball inbounded, but gets stolen by Kalen Trong. Try to work around Edwards by the sideline, and Edwards gets called for the foul. The first personal foul for Edwards, first team foul of the quarter. As the inbound goes to Trong, works it back to the right side, tries to get a screen by Kempton. Now they dish it over to Kempton, who takes one step with the dribble, then tries to throw it over to Ejin, loses the handle for a second, now picks it back up as she works against Sydney Hunter with 10 to shoot. Ejin throws over the far side, Walker, seven seconds left, and they're definitely far away from the basket. Four, three to shoot. Walker with the step back off the front end of the rim and a rebound by Gorman. A good defensive stop there for the Toreros. Coming up with a little bit more tempo now, Jordan Edwards takes a nice little float shot, but off the front end of the rim and a rebound by Walker. Walker kicks it up to Trong as Gonzaga has a 26-7 lead. Trong trying to work it inside on Oakry, kicks back out to the three-point line, then over to Walker, who gets it to Kempton at the top of the key, over to O'Connor, back to Trong, Trong for three, and off the front end of the rim. Rebound, Kempton, put back, rolls around and in, and Gonzaga now up 28-7. 21-point lead for the Bulldogs. Who are also currently on a 5-0 run and have scored 14, have led 14-3 in the last six minutes of play. Inside Kendall Bird draws the foul. Melody Kempton gets charged with their first foul of the evening. And Kendall Bird will shoot at the free throw line. Bird is a 51% free throw shooter. A redshirt senior out of Buckley, Washington. Six foot two. Bird has two points tonight for San Diego and a rebound. And now three points after making the free throw. Yeah, that's the second one. 28 to nine now in favor of the Bulldogs. All nine points have come from two players from San Diego. Kendall Bird has four and Steph Gorman has five. As for the Bulldogs, they have five players with points tonight led by Sierra Walker, who's got nine. Kempton over to Trong. Trong pumps once. Walker again for three. Rolls out of the rim. Rebound by Kempton. Kempton puts it back. Draws the foul. Can't get the bucket, but she will shoot two. Melody Kempton, one of the Gonzaga Bulldogs. But very successful high school careers. You go down the list and a lot of the Bulldogs were either Gatorade Player of the Year nominees in their state or McDonald All-American nominees. Kempton was both of those. The two-time North Idaho Female Athlete of the Year, a two-time North Idaho Female Athlete of the Year in track as well. Really good in the high jump and the triple jump three-time state champion in both and a superior athlete here for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. And Gonzaga with a 20-point lead over the Toreros up 29 to 9. And they're going to bring pressure here with just under five minutes to play as Carr is now in for the first time tonight. Harrison Run Carr, six foot four freshman out of India, but played her high school ball in Florida. Carr with a step back off the back end of the rim and a rebound by Bree Salenbein. See her for the first time tonight. Trong works it back. Being covered by Newbert. Now Trong with the left-handed dribble goes inside the paint over to Kempton who gets stuffed by Carr. And a rebound by Jufre and that ball gets picked 
and stolen and scored by Tron. It was a great defensive play for San Diego, turned into points for Gonzaga as Dufre takes it across court. Carr at the top working over to Horsemeyer. Horsemeyer trying to work it inside, but kicks it over to Gorman. Gorman with a deep three and off the back end of the rim. Rebounded by Kempton. Trong bringing it across the floor with a 31-9 lead here. Three minutes and 25 seconds to go in the first quarter. Kempton outside covered by Newbert, trying to get it to Walker, who's getting covered by Gorman. And Gorman's like a blanket, but he's going to get charged with the foul after reaching in. That's Gorman's first personal foul, be the third team foul for the Toreros here in the second quarter. And with that, Edwards and Martinson will come back into the game. They'll start it this afternoon's game. As Tron gets the inbound, we also see Eliza Hollingsworth in as well. She's out of Melbourne, Australia. She just possessed the ball and got it over to Salen Vine with nine seconds to shoot. Salen Vine works it into Verjoge, but it gets intercepted by Edwards up to Martinson. Martinson works it back with a deep jump shot, and that rolls around the rim and out. And they're going to call a foul, foul by Kaelin on Kalen Trong. So that will be Trong's per second personal foul, be the third team foul for Gonzaga here in the second quarter. So Edwards will now inbound it with three minutes to go in the second quarter. Works it into Martinson, covered by Salenbein. And she's going to take a three. Ball gets tipped a little bit, but off the front end of the rim. Newbert with the rebound. Can't get it to go up. Gets her rebound again. And at least draws the foul. Going against a lot of height in there is Newbert. Newbert stands in at six foot one. She was going against six foot five. Anwa Verjoge. Six foot six, Bree Salenbein. And six foot three, Eliza Hollingsworth. Casey Newbert will shoot two now. 55.9% free throw shooter. And yeah, misses the first. Makes the second. 31 10. Gonzaga with a 21-point lead. They've been on a 21-5 run the last 12 minutes of the game. And a turnover there by the Gonzaga Bulldogs as Jordan Edwards now brings it across court with the spin, picks up her dribble, kicks it out to Martinson, who pumps once, now works back with the left, out to Newbert on the outside. Jump shot is good. A little 15-foot shot there by Casey Newbert. O'Connor trying to work it coast to coast. She gets cut off by Horsemeyer and dribbles it back out. 2.15 left in the half. 18 to shoot on the shot clock. As Hollingsworth tried to create some room with her elbow there. Gets it over to Salem Bind. Now kicks it over to Ejen. Out to Trong for three. That's off the rim and a rebound by Horsemeyer. Two minutes to go here before halftime. Bulldogs lead it 31 to 12. Gordon Edwards across the center line now as she calls out the offense and now trying to work against O'Connor. Gets a screen there by Blakes, who's in the game for the first time tonight. And the left-handed lay-in is good by Jordan Edwards. 31-16 now, as San Diego's on a little bit of a run. Trong with a nice putback, and that's good. 33-14. Martinson now works it inside. Drives baseline, cuts it back out, tries to get it over to Blakes. As Nicole Blakes kicks it over to Jordan Edwards. Edwards trying to get, or it's getting sealed off there by Gonzaga, and a reach in foul will be called. Be the first personal foul for Trong. Fifth team foul for Gonzaga. Jordan Edwards at the charity strike, 75% free throw shooter on the year, only 40% in conference play. 
We've seen a little dip in her scoring once conference play started. It makes the first free throw. And can't get the second one to go. 33-15 in favor of the Zags with one minute to go here before halftime. Chong trying to work it inside to Ejin, but that gets picked off by Horsemeyer. Horsemeyer then throws it away, and Ejin's there again. Edwards gets her hands on the ball, but, walk, uh, but Williams is there to take it out. Chong for three, in and out. Rebound Gonzaga, back out to Trong, who works it inside as Blakes gets a piece of it. Kempton battles for it. Kempton's still trying to get it. Blakes touches it, and it's gonna say out on Gonzaga. I think it last touched O'Connor, potentially Kempton. Blakes was there as well. For my angle, it was a little difficult, but they're gonna rule it in favor of San Diego with 35 seconds left before half. There's a difference about eight seconds between the shot clock and the game clock. Horsemeyer out to Newbert. Newbert to Blakes at the top. Blakes works it down inside to Martinson. Martinson trying to create space to get a shot off. 10 seconds on the shot clock with the step back. Off the front of the rim, tries to get her own rebound. At least jars it loose of Trong. And Gonzaga will have the final possession with 10 seconds left before halftime. Trong over with the left hand. Pulls up and gets it to go. A potential three-point play right before halftime as Trong gets her 11th point of the night, now leads Gonzaga for the afternoon. So she will shoot one at the free throw line. 80% free throw shooter compared to her sister, who's a 91%, but it still doesn't matter because there's still exceptional free throw shooters here on this Bulldogs team, and she makes it. 36-15 lead now for Gonzaga, 3.4 ticks left. Esther Little can now come into the game, six foot two freshman out of England. Spent some time playing for the British national team. Two seconds to shoot. Edwards pulls it up from deep and off the back of the backboard in the top of the rim, and it goes out. After one half of play, Gonzaga leads it 36-15. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes for halftime stats on the West Coast Conference Network.
roughly. You said it was like 47 when you said 45. That's pretty close. Okay. It's halftime here at the Jenny Craig Pavilion on the campus of the University of San Diego where the Gonzaga Bulldogs currently have a 36-15 lead over the San Diego Toreros here in West Coast Conference basketball. Uh, the story of the night has been Gonzaga making shots compared to San Diego not really making shots. Gonzaga coming into tonight, we knew as part of the pregame that we kind of did and, and, and based on the stats, Gonzaga was going to be able to shoot the three ball and was going to be able to make their free throws and hit their buckets. Uh, they're only fifth in the West Coast Conference in scoring, but they've come out firing tonight against the San Diego Toreros. Now, the positive for San Diego, they actually have held Gonzaga to a pretty low three-point percentage. Gonzaga right now four for 15 from the three-point line, something that uh, is very uncharacteristic for the Bulldogs. Now, if San Diego can keep that up, they might be able to work back into the game. The downside for the Toreros, they're shooting only 20% from the field. They're five for 25 currently. Uh, Steph Gorman still leading the way with five points, but San Diego's going to have to start making some shots if they want to be able to stay in the game against the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Free throw wise, we knew Gonzaga was one of the best in the country, if not the, at least the best in the West Coast Conference. As of right now, they're shooting 80% from the free throw line. That's something to watch down the stretch. Again, San Diego trying to get back into the game. If you can't be able to make your free throws late in the game and one team can make a lot of them, you're going to have to, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. We mentioned the kind of keys of the game in terms of the players of the game to watch for. Sierra Walker has been that player tonight. She came out firing with, uh, with, with some three-point baskets. She has nine points. It's not the most on the team. That's by uh, Kaylee Trong. She has 12. But as for Gonzaga, they're shooting the ball right now. San Diego is not. Let's take a look at the uh, halftime stats for you. Gonzaga completely dominating the boards. They lead 26 to San Diego's 12 and rebounds. They out do the assist six to three to San Diego. In terms of steals, something that San Diego is very good at and top in the conference, they do have more steals than Gonzaga at six to five. Fast break points, Gonzaga leads at six nothing. Gonzaga also dominating in the paint, 14 points to San Diego's four. As for the shooting percentages tonight, 41% from the field for Gonzaga to San Diego's 20%. Four for 15 for the three-point line, like I mentioned earlier. San Diego's one for five. And then at the charity strike, eight for 10 for the Bulldogs and four for six for the Toreros. Should be another good uh, half of basketball here at the Jenny Craig Pavilion. I'm Braden Soprano. Thanks again for tuning in to the West Coast Conference Network. When we come back, we'll have second half action between Gonzaga and San Diego. Clear. Is that long enough? The other thing we can do in the future is like a uh, out of town scoreboard in the West Coast Conference. That's a good halftime thing. I didn't think about that until I just saw the scores.
Welcome back into the Jenny Craig Pavilion on the host campus of the University of San Diego, which is picked by the Princeton Review Board as the third prettiest campus in the United States. Gonzaga and San Diego. Gonzaga leading at 36-15. I'm Braden Soprenit. Thanks again for watching the West Coast Conference Network for the WCC Women's College Basketball. Gonzaga 6-0 in conference play. Trying to maintain pace with BYU atop the leaderboard in the conference. San Diego has lost five straight West Coast Conference games and have dropped down to seventh in the conference out of ten. They've had to play a handful of those games without Kira Oakry, though, who's just fouled on the last play. Kira Oakry, before she was injured and missed some time, actually had eight, it was averaging 18 points per game in conference games shooting 59% from the field and 73% from three-point range. Had 24 against Gonzaga last time out, including a 15-point performance in the fourth quarter. Which is a career high for her. Four seconds to shoot now for Edwards. Left-handed dribble, one on the clock, stuffed by Kempton. Will be a shot clock violation as the Toreros will turn the ball over. And Kempton will inbound it now for Gonzaga. Strong bringing it across court, kicks it inside to O'Connor. O'Connor over to Virgil Gay. Gets it back over to Trong. O'Connor in the corner. Trying to work out of it back to Trong. 17 on the shot clock. Over to Walker on the far side. Back to Trong. Around the horn to O'Connor. And O'Connor picked up her pivot foot. It'll be a turnover against the Toreros. Jordan Edwards bring it across court, left-handed dribble, and a nice easy jump shot outside the block to go for San Diego. Get the scoring started here in the second half as they now trail 36 to 17. Trong at the far side, cover to O'Connor, back to Trong, Walker, uncontested three, and she actually misses it off the back end of the rim, and a foul called against O'Connor. That was kind of the mention on the halftime part of today's broadcast, in fact, the Bulldogs who usually shoot extremely well from the three-point line are shooting 25% tonight. They came out firing three for nine in the first quarter and then one for six in the second. Now 0 for one in the third as Oakry gets the ball taken away and it'll be a foul call. So the foul will be on Kira Oakry. Second personal First team foul of the third quarter. Pressure here from the Toreros. As Gonzaga tries to run their press break, gets it down to Virgil Gay, who kicks it over to Kempton. Kempton out to Walker, Walker out to Trong, and they continue to have some great ball movement here offensively. Kempton, Trong picks up her dribble, now walks over to the near side, kicks it over to Kempton inside the paint. It's good. 38-17. Walker will bring the pressure solo against Edwards. Who's coming up on the left side. Hands off over to Oakry. Outside the three-point line on the wing. Kendall Bird now outside. Over to Oakry on the near side. And the ball gets knocked away, but out of bounds off of Gonzaga. So San Diego will inbound it with 11 seconds left on the shot clock. As they work it inside to Oakry. Oakry cuts it back over to Bird. Just outside the free throw line. He kicks it to Gorman. Five to shoot on the shot clock. Gorman trying to find a shot. There's Kendall Bird cutting to the base. To the basket and can't get it to go. Off the front end of the rim. And a rebound by Gonzaga. And a reach-in foul by Sidney Hunter. Third personal foul for Hunter. Second team foul of the third quarter. So Hunter will go to the bench for a little bit, as well as Kendall Bird. Newbert now in, as well as Laura Erickstra. Strong inside to Kempton, working against Erickstra. Goes up strong, but off the glass, and then off of a Torero out of bounds. Uh, 
Offensive foul. Called against O'Connor. O'Connor's second personal foul, third team foul of the quarter. Walker continued to bring solo pressure against Edwards when she brings the ball over the court. Newbert was there for an outlet, didn't really matter. Over to Gorman now at the elbow. Kick out to Kalfani with the jump shot off the back end of the rim and a rebound by Walker. Strong saw O'Connor down court and decided not to throw it down there as she works against Kelfani. In a cross over to the left side, Kempton with the snag. And it's gonna be a foul assessed to Kalfani. Melody Kempton exiting the game as Von Ejim now will come in. As O'Connor gets it in the trunk, now back over to O'Connor. Gordon Edwards got a piece of that. And O'Connor now works it in. Quick ball movement again for Gonzaga. Cross court pass now over the near side. Walker. Walker runs right into Gorman. Loses the handle. It'll be a jump ball. And San Diego will take the possession. Nice little hustle play there by Steph Gorman. Newbert now over to Kofani. Works it back out to Edwards. 10 to shoot on the shot clock. Walker cuts off Edwards from going to the right side. Now Edwards will cut it back. Left-handed drive. And it rolls out of the rim. Rebounded by Edwards. And she steps out of bounds. On a good hustle play. It'll be Gonzaga ball as we see... Kaylin Trong now come back into the game for Gonzaga. Kaylin Trong and Kaylee Trong are now both in for Gonzaga, the twin sisters. Coming out of Houston, Texas, they both attended Jersey Village. And the twin sisters actually had the same ranking out of, out of high school. They both ranked 28th out of point guards by ESPN. They do everything pretty much similar in terms of stats as that pass gets thrown out of way. Kaylin Trong a little bit better at free throw shooting statistically. She shoots 91% from the free throw line where Kaylee shoots 80. But you go down the list, field goal percentage pretty much the same. Average of assist is pretty much the same per game. Kaylin gets a couple more rebounds a game than her sister Kaylee. And barely outscores Kaylee as Kaylin Trong averages 11 points per game and Kaylee averages 10.9. Fouls on Yvonne Ejim, and now we'll take a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll have free throws as the Bulldogs lead San Diego 38-17 on the West Coast Conference Network.
Coming out of the media timeout, Laura Erickstrup will shoot free throws. 70% free throw shooter. Six foot two sophomore to Portland, Oregon, attended Beaverton High School. Her sister plays at Arizona State. Saw that matchup earlier in the season in non conference play. And Erickstrup makes the first and makes the second as they cut the deficit down to 38 19 favor of the Bulldogs who has been scoreless in the last three minutes of action Williams bring it across the court now and Gorman reaches in there for a alternating possession and Gonzaga will keep the possession on that one but a good defensive play yet again by Steph Gorman and of course Jordan Edwards and intercepted there by Edwards Almost loses the handle when Eric Strupp ran by. Try to get it inside to Eric Strupp, and it's tipped last by a Bulldog. So San Diego will have the possession underneath the basket as Kylie Horsmeyer now checks into the game for San Diego. Inbound to Gorman, uncovered. Can't get the three to go, and a rebound by Ejim. As Ejim will now take it across court. Kicks it over to Walker, who dishes it to Trong at the SD logo at the middle of the court. Over to the left side now is Williams. Trying to get a screen from Verjoge. Now works to the right. Over to Trong in the near side. Covered by Kofani. You get another Ejim screen. Creates a bucket for Gonzaga, 40 to 19 now. Ayana Kofani calling out the shots at the point guard position, trying to work it past Trong, who jars it loose a little bit, but Kofani maintains possession. Gets it over to Gorman as she works on the right side. Now a spin move at the West Coast Conference logo, throws it up off the backboard, can't get it to go. Rebound by Ejim. As Trong brings it across the floor, 3.30 to remaining here in the third quarter and a 40-19 lead for the Bulldogs. Wide open is Virgil Gay, and it's good. 42-19. Three-point basket for Eric Strupp. And it goes out of bounds. So we'll see Martinson now come into the game as well as Sidney Hunter. O'Connor is back for Gonzaga as well as Kempton. Hunter's played 20 minutes tonight. Kempton has played 19. As for San Diego, Sidney Hunter, after getting her third personal foul, has only played 15 minutes tonight. Martinson, who started the game, has only played 10. Under three minutes to go here in the third. O'Connor over to Trong. Trong for three. Yes. 45-19. And we're going to have a timeout on the floor. Gonzaga leading at 45-19 with 2.35 remaining here in the third quarter. You want to come back with the uh, shot of the head coach of uh, Gonzaga? 
Can we talk about her? Coming back out of the timeout, you see Lisa Fortier calling it out, the head coach of the Gonzaga Bulldogs in her eighth season as the head coach of Gonzaga. They have a 178 and 47 record at her at the helm, but it's not her eighth season at Gonzaga total. She did spend some time as the assistant coach and coordinator of basketball operations back in 2004 before going to Northern Colorado. And then coming back to Gonzaga in 07, where she was an assistant to 2014, where she got promoted to be the head uh, basketball coach. Has had a lot of success, not only on the court, but off the court. And when you talk about, when you talk to the Gonzaga players about why they came to Gonzaga, some say faith, some say the program, but a lot of them have to say about how much of a family atmosphere the Gonzaga Bulldogs women's basketball program is and how they feel at home as that two-point bucket goes for Gonzaga. And how they have an elite coaching staff and how much they enjoy being a part of the Gonzaga program underneath Lisa Fortier. Jordan Green is one of her assistant coaches as well as Stacy Kleinsmith and her husband, Craig Fortier, who came over eight seasons ago when Lisa became the head basketball coach at Gonzaga and what great success the Bulldogs program has had, not only in the West Coast Conference, but total. I mentioned it earlier in the broadcast, in the past five seasons, Gonzaga is 72 and five in West Coast Conference play. Three-time West Coast Conference tournament champions during that time span. And they have won 40 of their last 43 games against West Coast Conference opponents. And they're currently leading San Diego 47 to 19 here with 105 to go in the third quarter. Dufres three-pointer does not go and a rebound by Trung. One minute remaining here in the third. Gonzaga with a 47-19 lead on San Diego. As Dufres covering O'Connor, then City Hunter with the pocket pick. Trying to lay it in, she does. 47-21, Sydney Hunter with a great defensive play that creates some offense for the Toreros who could really use some. 35 seconds left, Jufre with a kick. Being in a good spot there though defensively. As O'Connor inbounds it to Trung. Edwards is there with coverage. 31 seconds left in the third quarter. Quick ball movement now. They work it inside. Now trying to get down to Kempton. And the ball gets knocked away by Hunter and picked up by Edwards. No shot clock now with 18 seconds left before the end of the third quarter. And Edwards will play for the final shot for the Toreros. Trying to dribble it out down to 10 seconds before she makes her move. Down to eight to seven, trying to get a screen from Eric Strupp, working now to her left side, three seconds to shoot, three-point basket, off the back end of the rim, and that'll do it for the end of three quarters. We've played three here at the Jenny Craig Pavilion, and the Bulldogs lead at 47-21 over San Diego when we come back. The final quarter, as you watch women's college basketball on the West Coast Conference Network.
One quarter left here at the Jenny Craig Pavilion on the campus of the University of San Diego where the Gonzaga Bulldogs lead it 47 to 21. Gonzaga trying to win their seventh straight West Coast Conference game to try to keep pay, pace with BYU atop the leaderboard in women's college basketball. O'Connor now works it down inside to Williams. Back over to O'Connor on the near side wing. Dribbling with the right hand. Gets surrounded by Toreros and inside now to Hybens, but she can't get it to go. And it goes out of play, and San Diego will take the possession here early on in the fourth quarter. I mentioned the trying to keep pace with BYU. They've already won this afternoon. They defeated San Francisco 99-58 as the 16th-ranked Cougars are now 8-0 in West Coast Conference play. Gorman with the jump shot off the front of the rim and rebounded by Kempton, but it's got to be alternating possessions in favor of San Diego. Other scores around the West Coast Conference in women's basketball. The Loyola Marymount defeated St. Mary's 73-62 earlier this afternoon. And at halftime, Santa Clara led Pacific 42-30. That game is now 57-45 in favor of Santa Clara as they get ready to start the fourth quarter of play. So it's a look at the West Coast Conference games in women's college basketball. As for the men, most of those games will get underway at, at about 30 minutes or so. We should have some good matchups in West Coast Conference plays. Jordan Edwards makes her first free throw of the night. 47-22 now. And makes the second. So not of the night. She is now four for five from the free throw line today. Now 47 to 23. More pressure by the Toreros as they work it over to Salenbein, who works it down inside to O'Connor, back out to Salenbein. Salenbein now over to Trong, pumps once, now drives inside the paint, finger roll, can't get it to go, but draws the foul. Like I mentioned, the men's games this afternoon or earlier this evening, the Toreros. San Diego men's basketball on the road, taking on Loyola Marymount. That game will get underway in about 30 minutes or so. Santa Clara is in San Francisco to take on the Dons. Pepperdine at St. Mary's at 5 p.m. Portland will be in Spokane to take on Gonzaga, number two ranked team in the country at six. And BYU will be playing Pacific at 6.30. Strong makes her free throw, make it 49-23. Dufray thought about a three, then kicks it out to Edwards, and it's going to be a foul on the floor. Oh, foul would be on Mott Hybens. Hunter from the free throw line, good. 49-25. Frey with contact. Be a foul assessed. And with the foul for Jufre, Kira Oakry will now check into the game. Shaw getting a screen from Ejin, kicks over to O'Connor for three. That's off the mark. An uncharacteristic performance from Gonzaga tonight from the three-point line, now shooting 26% after that missed free uh, three-pointer. Now 27%, five for 18. One for eight, or sorry, one for nine. The last nine three-point shots. Oakry for three, doesn't matter. Going to be an offensive foul. Correction, a blocked foul underneath the basket. Assessed to Kaylee Trong. Third personal foul for Trong. Third team foul for Gonzaga. Good shot, though, by Oakry. As Edwards puts it in, a nice put back to Edwards. Three-point basket, nothing but net. 49-28. 
San Diego trying to go on a run as they bring the full court pressure. Eight minutes to go in the game as Sidney Hunter calls off, gets off Salem Bine, who throws it away to Edwards. Another steal by Edwards. She tries to work it up and throws it away to Ejin. And so the threat by San Diego does not come to pass as Gonzaga will now take it across court. Edwards trying to pick the pocket of Trong, who gets through that, and we got a foul. Will be the second personal foul assessed to Edwards. Third team foul of the quarter. So Gonzaga will inbound it now from the baseline. As Kempton got at the top over the Trong. Trong works off the Kempton screen, goes down the lane to the left, and it's good. 51 28. Jordan Edwards moving quick now, picks up her dribble. Oakry for three off the rim and a rebound by Erikstra. Edwards for three. Good. 51-31, San Diego's pulled within 20 now with seven minutes to go, and then on a 9-2 run in the last four minutes. The ball gets ripped away, Gorman's there, gets it away, Oakry with the up pass, Sidney Hunter on the fast break, lay in, off the rim. Would have been a good opportunity there for San Diego. They've been making a couple stops. They got to be able to take advantage of it with points off turnovers. Something they only have. They got 14 on the night, 13 to Gonzaga. Walker for three. That will silence the San Diego comeback for a little bit. Walker, who came out strong with three three pointers early on, made her first in about three quarters, now with 12 points on the, eve on the afternoon. San Diego unable to get any points off of that possession with six minutes to go here in the fourth. Strong gets a screen from Kempton and then draws contact from Oakry. So that's Oakry's third personal foul. Fourth team foul for the Toreros in the quarter. Hollingsworth tries to give a screen to Trong, but she dishes it over to Little. That's her. Little gets her pocket picked by Hunter. Hunter lays it in this time. 54-33. And the Toreros continue to dominate when it comes to stealing. They have accumulated 14 steals tonight as that one goes through for Gonzaga. 14 steals, a little bit more than average for San Diego, which leads the West Coast Conference. They average 12.9 a game. Already got 14 tonight. Three-pointer for Edwards off to the right. Trong will haul it in and bring it up with some tempo. Walker with the pump fake now back to Trong. Trong reverses course to the left. And her three-point basket doesn't go. Battle for the ball underneath the backboard, and it goes out of play off of the Toreros. Horsemeyer coming into the game for Sydney Hunter. Horsemeyer on the night, 0 for 1. He's played 12 minutes. As they dish it inside to Walker, who then retreats back outside to the three-point line. Dish over the far side, Trong. Or works it back over to the right. Pump fake once by Hollingsworth, and she throws it over Egan's head. Cannot handle it. She goes out of play. And there's going to be a timeout. Final timeout of the evening, 56-33 in favor of the Bulldogs. More action when we come back on the West Coast Conference Network.
Gonzaga leads it 56-33. I'm Braden Soprano. Thanks again for tuning in the West Coast Conference Network as we have made it past the media timeout here in the fourth quarter. San Diego has uh, scored a little bit more here in the fourth than they've had the rest of the game. They put up 12 points already this fourth quarter. They hadn't scored double digits in any quarter tonight as Oak Reed throws up a three, does not draw anything, and Trong will haul it in. Mr. Little over to Trong. Who dribbles right side down to the near side corner. Now back over to the top to Sierra Walker, who drives left side. Layup, count the bucket. An athletic play there by Sierra Walker. 14th point of the night. We'll try to make it her 15th with her first free throw attempt of the evening. Sierra Walker. 91.7% free throw shooter. And that's good. Walker now three points away from tying a season high, 18 points, which came back against Stephen F. Austin back on December 12th. She had four three-pointers in that game. She has four three-pointers in tonight's game. Edwards. Loses control of it. Draws the foul after she threw the ball off of the shot clock. Anna Verjoge gets tagged with the foul. Her third personal. And Edwards will shoot two. First one is good. Edwards on the night, 13 points, leads the Toreros. Now 14 after that free throw. Four for five from the free throw line, and now five for six. Four assists and five steals, which also leads the Toreros. In fact, Jordan Edwards leads the Toreros in every stat category except for rebounds and blocks this afternoon. She also leads in turnovers with four. 59-35, Gonzaga lead over the Toreros. Rajoke working it over to Trong. Corner shot. Walker. It's good. Ties the season high. 18 points. Most three-pointers this year for Walker. She's made her fifth. Edwards tried to answer with a three, and she does. Trading threes here at the Jenny Craig Pavilion. Bulldogs up 62-38. Little gets trapped, gets it over to Verjoge, who also gets trapped in the corner, works it inside to Hollingsworth. Outside Walker, uncontested three, good. Her sixth three-pointer of the night. She now has 21 on the afternoon, a season high for Walker. That doesn't come to th fruition for San Diego. So after that three-point basket by Walker, season high, 21 points. Six three-pointers made, correction, five three-pointers made tonight. Sixty-five, thirty-eight. no, it is six. 21 points, four rebounds and two steals for Sierra Walker as Jordan Edwards is able to maintain possession on that one, almost losing it, and then throws it back inside. Horsemeyer fights for it. Now it's picked up by Salenbein. Salenbein working it down the court, over to Trong, back to Salenbein, and in. 67-38 in favor of the Bulldogs. Two minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Horsemeyer with a jump shot and it rolls out of the rim and a rebound by Hybins. Strong will bring it up the court a little bit slowly now, or a little bit more slow. Try to start working some of this clock as the Bulldogs are well on their way to improving to 16 and four on the year. And Strong tries to go for three, that doesn't go. Rebounded by 
Hunter up to Edwards. Works it back. Martinson, three, uh, just short. And Williams will haul it in for Gonzaga. 90 seconds to go in the game. Salenbein for three. And that doesn't go. Rebounded by Hollingsworth. Back out to Trong. Trong tr thought about a three. And then picked up her dribble with 15 to go on the shot clock. Getting the screen from Hollingsworth. Now cuts it inside. Gets cut off by Hunter. Back outside the three-point line with seven to shoot. Working it inside to Hybins. And Hybins draws the foul with five seconds left on the shot clock and 108 to go here in the game. Cole Blakes will now check into the game for San Diego. She comes in for Laura Erickstrup. Ivins makes her first free throw. Came in tonight, two for four from the free throw line, now three for five. Misses the second, so she'll have one point as Edwards gets the rebound, fights it off with a minute to go. Edwards working into Blakes. Blakes at the top. Now back down to Edwards. Edwards against a wall, but makes it through. Down 68-40, trying to make it a more respectable game on the scoreboard at least. One thing you know out of San Diego is they're going to battle to the end. Sydney Hunter tagged with her fourth personal foul of the evening. Salambine's free throw is no good. 83% free throw shooter. She was a four star recruit out of high school, six foot six freshman from Adrian, Michigan. Second best recruit out of Michigan, Salambine was. She was also the Gatorade Player of the Year. Seventh best guard in the country as well, coming out of high school. Horsemeyer, correction, Martinson, three, good. 69-43, Martinson drops a big three there. That's going to be an offensive foul against Gonzaga, 69-43. After this afternoon's game, Gonzaga will move on to take on Brigham Young as the two leaders in the conference will go at it head-to-head -head after tonight. San Diego will travel up to Northern California to take on San Francisco and Santa Clara on February 3rd and fifth. That will do it for this afternoon's game. Bulldogs win at 69-43 over the San Diego Toreros. Gonzaga now 16-4 on the season. San Diego with the loss drops to 10-10. A seven-game win streak now in the West Coast Conference for the Bulldogs. A six-game losing streak for San Diego. For our crew here at the Jenny Craig Pavilion, I'm Braden Soprenit. Thanks again for tuning in the West Coast Conference Network. And be sure to check us out next time as San Diego takes on LMU on February 10th. Have a good night, everybody.